I'm John with Fluidine, and what we're going to go over today is how to build a simple V20 pump. I've already got all the components here. The body, the cover, pressure plate, plus pressure plate spring, O-rings, shaft and bearing, cartridge kit, cartridge kit pins. So the first thing you want to do is install the shaft seal and press it all the way down so it's flush down to the bottom. Once you do that, you can set it with the shaft seal facing up on any kind of pedestal or a bench or something with a hole in the bottom of it because the shaft is going to go all the way through. So you want to just line the shaft up, press it in as far as you can by hand, and then get a hammer and just try and tap it in the rest of the way so it sinks all the way down inside. If it doesn't go in initially, just keep tapping it or just you know, flip it over and, and then we'll just center it. You got to make sure it's centered in here. And if it's not, it's not going to go down all the way. There we go. See? So once we got that in, then you want to get your retaining ring for the shaft and the bearing and put that on. A pair of snap ring pliers. And what we're going to do there, line that up. Get your snap ring on. Make sure it's seated all the way down in the groove. If it's not, give the shaft seal a couple more taps to make sure everything is down inside there and seated properly. And the snap ring is fully expanded inside the snap ring groove. Once you have that done, you can flip over the body. Set it straight up, and then you're going to get your cartridge kit locator pins. Put those in the hole and install them. One O-ring for the body, and we'll put in the uh, description down below what size this O-ring is. That way if you do lose one, you have a size to get another one and match it up properly. So once you have the O-ring installed and the two pins, then you can go ahead and put your cam ring on. Now your cam ring does have a directional arrow on it, so that will determine your direction of rotation. That's always viewed from the shaft end of the pump on these. So if you want it right hand, you want to make sure your arrow is going right handed viewed from the shaft end. So once you have that set and you want to install it on the pump, and then you want to put on your rotor and vanes. Your vanes, they do have a rounded edge on one side. This rounded edge is going to go out towards the cam ring and then you're just going to slide them right inside the rotor. If some of them do fall out, that's fine. You can just pick them up and reinstall them. They should have a nice slip fit inside there. And when you get new parts, you always want to measure them and make sure the dimensions between the cam ring, rotor, and vanes are within maybe a half a thou. If you have too much of a tolerance, then the pump won't perform right and you'll just start losing flow as you run your pressure up. Once you have all that installed, you can go ahead and install your pressure plate and just slide that on there. Line it up with the two pins for the cam ring. Then you can go ahead and put your other O-ring on there to seal up the cover once you install it. Last thing is your pressure plate spring. This is going to hold pressure on the, pressure on the plate to keep it securely down on the cam ring, keep everything contained inside there. And then you want to put on your cover. So when you install your cover, this is where you could change any kind of porting. Uh, if you want it in line with your inlet, you know, that's normally C porting. If you want it opposite in the model code, that would be A porting. So we're just going to do it in line. You can just set it on there, get a couple of bolts, and just slip them through. And you should by hand be able to squeeze down the pressure plate and then just kind of by hand at least get one bolt down just to kind of hold everything in place. And then once you get that bolt down, everything should, should be lined up, should be in place. You don't have to worry about the O-ring extruding out and being cut. You can just get a simple little impact, battery operated, or pneumatic, and just zip down the other ones real quick. Now you're sure all four bolts are, are down and everything is secured in place. And the last thing you want to do is torque these bolts down from 75 to 80 foot-pounds. And that's it. That's how you build a little V20 pump. Now, uh, there have been other questions on how to change rotation. Well, you're just going to pull the, these bolts out and then take this cam ring uh, and take it off after you remove the cover, the pressure plate spring and the pressure plate and then you're going to flip the cam ring over. 
So I remember that springs under there, so we're just going to hold this down while we remove this other bolt. Cover's going to pop up a little bit, so we'll remove that, the spring, this O-ring, and we'll get this pressure plate up off there. So that's when you can change rotation on your cam ring. Now if everything else comes up with it, that's fine. You can just reinstall it back on there. So originally we had it as right hand, so now we're going to change it to left hand. You don't have to change the rotor and vanes. You can leave those the way they are. Those are bi-rotational. And reinstall your cam ring so now it's left-handed. Once you do that, just reinstall all the other components. And then if you want to change porting, we can make it A porting for this one. Squeeze it down by hand. And we'll just quickly just tighten this bolt down to hold everything in place. Once that's locked in place, you can install the other three bolts. And once you have all those installed, you can go ahead and retorque them down, 75 to 80 foot-pounds, and then you're all set. Your vein pump is ready to go and be installed in the service. Don't forget to like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel and tune back in for some more videos.